Thank you very much for coming to this session. So in this session, so, uh, my name is Togami. Uh, I work for the research lab in LINE, and I would like to uh, give a presentation on speech source separation with deep learning. First, I would like to introduce myself. So I joined uh, this newly established research uh, lab uh, in 2018 in June. And I mainly do research at LINE, but I also am a member of the community member of a Japan AI, a Society of AI and also the signal processing of IEEE. And mainly my research has been focused on the speech processing. So now I work for the research labs. And maybe some of you might have heard that LINE has a research lab. This uh, research lab is something that I would like to share with you. It was launched in April of 2018, and our mission is to contribute to the future of the line business, and we uh, conduct base, uh, basic uh, researches on artificial intelligence. One characteristic of our research lab is that it's not that we uh, research uh, on ourselves. We collaborate with NII, and through NII, we discuss with various researchers and academia uh, throughout the nation to proceed with our research. Currently, we aim to submit papers uh, for major international conferences. And at this research labs, we are conducting research and development of speech separation technology, which is a topic of this session. So today, this is the agenda. And I would like to present on the speech source separation. First, I would like to give you the overview of speech source separation. Then, I will talk about the two main uh, flow. One is the source separation with statistical modeling. And another way is a speech source separation with deep neural network, DNN. So those two directions are something I would like to share. And although we have DNN, but DNN and speech source separation are not fully integrated. Therefore, in order to solve that issue, we are researching how we can deeply integrate the speech source separation and DNN. So let me uh, start. So what is speech source separation? I would like to give you some demonstration. So in actual meeting room, there are two people talking, and we recorded their voice. And at the time of recording, their voices are mixed. But with a speech uh, source separation, we separate their voices and extract them. So let me demonstrate. Sorry, the volume was too small. はい、in the middle, we were able to pick up just one person's voice. 
As you can see, we can uh, extract only one person's speech. So this is a block diagram of speech sourced separation technology. It's very simple. So what's coming in is the mixed signal. And that's an input. And we process it. And we separate uh, the speeches. So what kind of applications can we think of for the speech source separation? One is AI speaker. Now AI speaker is coming quite uh, popular in households, but basically AI speaker is designed uh, with the assumption that it's a one-to-one -one, uh, conversation with AI speaker and person. But I'm sure there are houses that multiple people are living. So can AI speaker un understand the multiple people's conversation? And if the proper information gets uh, provided, depending on that context, context, that would be great. So the speech source separation technology would become very useful. Also, in the business scene, in a meeting, this uh, speech source separation technology would be helpful. We spend a lot of time on meetings, but during a meeting, all the speeches are volatile and they would just uh, get eliminated or disappear. So how we can leave those volatile voices as assets? So we spend our time and efforts and uh, converting those voices to text. But if we use this uh, speech source separation technology, we can separate uh, each member's voices and we can use voice recognition to convert them to text so we know uh, who made what kind of remarks during the meeting, so that information can be left as an asset without incurring a lot of cost. Also, in the music scene, this uh, speech source separation technology could be useful. For example, the orchestra sound has a lot of multiple instruments sound, and we can eliminate uh, the sound of a particular instrument, and you add your own performance of your instrument. Then you can enjoy as if you are a virtual member of an orchestra. So in those various scenes, uh, it is expected that this speech uh, source separation technology could be applied. So this technology uh, needs to be implemented on the computer, and that's the target of our research. And various researches have been conducted. Uh, currently, the DNN method is becoming a mainstream, but in the past, the statistical modeling uh, speech source separation has been uh, the target of research. So uh, let's look at that uh, speech source separation using statistical modeling. But what is speech signal? Speech signal, as you can see on the slide, it's a chronological uh, waveform, and it's a record of the sound pressure, and you actually get that as an input. And raise your hand if you actually uh, deal with those uh, voice speech uh, waveform on a daily basis. I see some hands that were raised. So raise your hand that you take a look at the spectrogram uh, on a daily basis. Oh, there are some people. That's great. But many of you are seeing the spectrogram for the first time. I see the spectrogram on a daily basis. And unless you hear the sound, you can't really see the contents of the sound. Maybe you think that, but you know, this spectrogram, by just looking at them, you can see that this is a friction sound such as S. So it's very convenient. And rather than the speech waveform, you can 
understand the characteristic of the voice by this spectrogram. So today, I want you to learn how to read this uh, spectrogram. So the horizontal scale is time. And the waveform and the time are synchronized. So what is the vertical scale? So that's frequency. So that's the height of the sound. Or uh, if it's low, it's low uh, sound. And if it's high, it's a high sound. And there are some differences in brightness. The brighter it is, it means that the volume of that frequency is high. And if it's close to blue, then the volume of the sound is small. So depending on the time, the frequency structure and the sound volume would uh, vary. As you can see, by changing the structure of the frequency, a voice is a medium to convey information. So on the spectrogram, you can separate the speech. So let me use some mathematical formula to explain this uh, topic of a speech source separation. So two speeches exist, and uh, each voice is C1 and C2. And the combination or mixture of that would be X. So that's the microphone input signal. And how would they mix? It's very simple, so they are just added. C1 plus C2 becomes X, which is a mic microphone input signal. But what we want to know is to uh, find out what are the original two voices, but we only have one signal. So if we only know the microphone input uh, signal X, there are infinite ways to identify those two voices. But just from X, you don't really know how to separate those two. So in order to select the appropriate C1 and C2, you need some kind of separate trigger other than X. So in speech source separation, we use two main triggers. And what are they? One is the spatial model, uh, which uh, when the sound reaches a microphone. So as if it's two earphones, let's say there are two microphones. And depending on where the sound is coming from, there is a difference in the sound volume and the time difference. For example, the person on the left would reach the left microphone first, then uh, comes to the right microphone uh, delayed and smaller, but the right-hand side person's voice would come to the right microphone first and big and goes to the left microphone smaller. So if you know the volume difference and the time difference of two microphones and for a certain timing, you can identify that uh, which microphone cat caught uh, that voice first, then you know uh, which person's voice it is. And if the voice reaches right microphone, oh, this must be uh, the person on the right. So the difference of the microphone input signal would be an important trigger to uh, estimate uh, the speech source. And I can uh, show that mathematically. So the input signal X uh, would come from the two elements, so that's vector, vectors. And uh, the speech signal S is a combination of S1 and S2. So it's a vector, vector S with two elements. And X uh, equals AS. So what is A? A shows how the uh, sound would reach. So it's a square ma ma matrix. And X and S 
uh, the vectors with two elements. So A is two times two. Uh, so it's a square matrix. So if it's a square matrix, you can invert the square matrix. So by multi multiplying the signal X by the invert of A, you can estimate uh, where the sound is coming from. So how the sound propagate would be the good important trigger to separate speech. But this is not sufficient. So I said that if you know A, you can separate. But in reality, where the source of the speech and how the sound propagate. So in other words, we don't know what A is. So how we come up with A? But the key point here is, although we don't know A, but we can just, you know, set A at a certain level, then we can get some kind of S uh, that is a separation sound. And this separation sound, whether that's a legitimate sound or separated sound, if we were able to assess that, and if we assess that it, it sounds like a speech, then that kind of random setting was actually adequate. So although we don't know A, but we can do the modeling of something like a sound, then it seems that we can do the speech source separation. So another trigger is, you know, the model of, you know, something like a sound like. So as you see, the people's voice it has a very characteristic structure on the spectrogram. So the sound like sound uh, would be uh, done to uh, do the modeling of a, voice, a speech spectrogram. Uh, one main uh, method is independent vector analysis that was proposed in 2006. In this method, so the model was adopted that the speech uh, tend to be uh, the bigger volume uh, uh, the, with all the frequency components would tend to be the big volume in the same time. So on the top, this is the original uh, spectrogram of the speech. And as you can see, the characteristic of the spectrogram uh, is expressed in a high level. But the original speech depending on the high frequency and low frequency, the uh, big volume timing is different. But with the IVA, that uh, level is not really expressed. So IVA is still a rough model. So another model that was proposed was ILMA. And in ILMA, so there are multiple uh, frequency component patterns where the volume increases. So compared to IVA, uh, we can more accurately express the original uh, speech spectrogram. So the speech source separation based on the statistical modeling have been used quite a bit, and it actually works quite effectively. But in uh, the point of speech modeling, it still has a gap between the original speech spectrogram. It's too easy or simple, and it's hard to say that it captures the speech spectrogram effectively. So in order to improve the accuracy, a uh, deep neutral network uh, came to uh, place. So once uh, the DNN uh, started to be used for speech source separation, what does DNN do? So the entry would be the speech spectrogram with multiple speeches. Then each speaker's clean voice speech spectrogram would be output. So the nonlinear regression analysis will be conducted. Then that parameter uh, would be trained uh, by uh, the DNN so that the regression analysis result would be accurate. So compared to the speech model uh, with the statistical modeling, uh, it became possible to more accurately model the speeches. So how? This DNN speech modeling can be used for speech separa source separation. So in general, so first we have the trained DNN speech source modeling. And at time of inference, uh, we use that and we connect that to the spatial model estimation and a speech source separation. Then we get the separated signal.
This model is becoming mainstream. However, in this kind of uh, structure, is this the most optimum way? So with this current structure, at the time of training, maybe DNN uh, doesn't use uh, or consider spatial modeling or separation. And it just uh, learns a parameter in order to improve the accuracy of speech source modeling estimation. Therefore, at the time of DNN learning, uh, the spatial modeling and the speech separation is not conducted, uh, considered, but the purpose is to get the better separation signal. So that's just an interim uh, measurement, and it's not the ultimate uh, goal. So is this structure the optimum one? So that's a question I still have. Therefore, for this reason, we do not study DNA independently. However, it is important to learn in a form that integrates DNA and also the speech source separation so that the separated sound is better. And in addition, from the learning point of view, we are conducting research based on the concept of integrating speech source separation and DNA more closely. And from here, I'd like to introduce some of the research results of one under the concept of deeply combining such sound source operation and DNA. I'd like to introduce three. That is, first of all, DNA is trained so as to maximize the sound. So usually after that, we have conducted this loss. However, well, because using this system, we are going to learn about the DNA. And therefore, after that, we calculate the DNA block. And therefore, we are putting all modules are uh, differentiated variable. The error passes through the sound source preparation layer. However, DNA parameters will be updated and the effects of spatial models and sound source separation can be taken into account during learning. So as you can see, we are able to calculate the differentiation and therefore they are able to renew the parameter and the error passes through the sound source separation layer. So having said that, how we are able to set this parameter? So I'm sure the standard is that the most standard loss function is a square error. However, the square error will cause an excessively large error when the separation signal estimated via DNA deviates greatly from the core and their answer, and there is a risk of overfitting. So this is an approach. However, for this, using this standard loss function, and also the square error, well, because there is a sample that we cannot separate fully. And if there is this item that we cannot separate fully, there will because they calculate in the square error. Therefore, there is a huge discrepancy. And therefore, the sample that they are not able to separate, and therefore, they are trying to learn. And therefore, as a result, there is a risk of overfitting. So in order to avoid and prevent the overfitting, we consider estimating not only the sound source separation signal, but also the variance of how much the separation signal is applied. So that is a kind of trustworthiness. And if the variance is large, the loss is calculated to discount the error. So this is the result. And here, so as you can see, this is a loss function results in an excessive error being disconnected from the square order to the log arithmetic order via the log term, so which is considered to reduce the risk of overfitting. So therefore, 
there is a dis there is a subtraction, and therefore we are able to reduce the risk of overfitting. And the result of actually comparing the sound source separation performance is shown here using SIR and SDR in order to evaluate evaluate the speech source separation performance and uh, measures of how well separation is performed on a log arithmetic scale. Higher is better. So as you can see, so this is the L2, and therefore we are able to have the better results. So in addition, not using the spatial model, and therefore we have compared to the conventional method of learning DNN without considering the spatial model. Since the evaluation is based on the conventional speech source separation method using DNN, the experimental conditions are different from the previous ones. So therefore, they are having a better performance. So as a result, so, as a second point of view of integrating the spatial mode and DNA, we are also investing in a method to incorporate not only the loss function, but also that uh, thinking about also the influence of the sound source operation directly into DNN. So this is the second item. So until now, it was like a black box. However, we look at the contents of the DNN. For example, until now, the voice signals are time series signals, therefore, the bidirectional long short term memory, that is BLSTM, is often used for the speech sound separation. And it is common to have several layers of BLSTM, and that is more frequent. And therefore, you can see the waveform from the beginning to the end with each BLSTM. And therefore, they estimate the parameters, and therefore, based on the parameters, and that parameter is passed on to the next BLSTM. And therefore, there are several layers. And therefore, as you can see, they are able to improve the accuracy of the sound separation. However, using this, it is very difficult to use that. For example, because we are able to utilize only the last layer, and therefore in the middle layers, this kind of spatial model in order to use the separation, they are not using this contents. And if they are able to use this kind of knowledge, it's better to use much earlier. So as a result, we thought that it is better to have the VLSTM to have to use more separation more if effectively. Therefore, we propose a sound separation nested structure. So as you can see, we are processing the several signals here. And therefore, for example, they are able to have this kind of integrated model in order to have a better understanding. So this is the result of analysis. As therefore, we have divided into microphones in four and four. Eight. In any case, the proposed nest structure shows better performance, especially when the number of microphones is eight. As you can see, the performance difference is increasing. As you can see here, those information of the space can be used, and therefore, this nested structure is being used more effectively. Therefore, the performance is becoming better. So that is the DNN and also the speech sound separation, and therefore by integrating that, we hope that we are able to improve the performance. However, I would like to talk about the third research topic that uses a DNN and sound source separation, and which is unsupervised DNN learning methods in sound source separation. So it's in the archive, and therefore, we are having a very good result. Therefore, I'd like to give you an advance in notice. 
for example, until now, this is a learning model, for example, using the mixed sounds and also the multiple sounds, for example, or because only and the core data on which each sound is separated are obtained. However, in practice, it is difficult to use correct data with each speech sound separation, for example, if they are going to use a mouse microphone and also the noise enters. And therefore, for example, if there are someone who is speaking, this kind of noise enters, and therefore it is very difficult to have a correct data. And therefore, there are lots of materials with the mixed sounds without the correct data. Therefore, DNA models should pursue this. So therefore, we are making a research on that. So well, because we are not able to get the correct data, therefore, we propose a method that uses a statistical model-based sound source separation that does not use DNA as a pseudo-clean signal generator for the problem. And how the DNA learns the DNA parameters to output the signal close to the pseudo-clean signal. So this is a structure. And I think there are many people who wonder here, for example, in short, isn't it the upper limit of the method not using the DNA being exceeded? So that could be a question. So of course, the interesting part of this research is that we can exceed the upper limit of the method that's, that does not use DNA. And the reason why is that the traditional speech sound separation tends to fail randomly at several frequencies. And therefore, DNA is able to learn these kind of norms. Therefore, we are not able to have a good results. However, the traditional speech sound source separation tends to fail randomly at several frequencies. And therefore, DNA is difficult to learn random errors, but rather it is easier to learn frequently since shapes such as a speech specific frequency characteristics. And therefore, DNA does not follow the separation error so much, and it may be possible to learn only where separation is successful. However, even though it does not follow random errors, if you use a square error for loss, the error will still be large. And therefore, there could be a concern for the overfitting. And therefore, it is essential to have this kind of loss function. As with the previously proposed loss function, a loss function that considers dispersion is used to prevent overfitting. This time, the correct data is also uncertain, and therefore, so there, so we need to, so we use the loss function. This is a callback library pseudo range that compares the probability distributions. So the result here. So as you can see here, this is a proposed method using the KLD, and we are able to have a better, good, better results. And also the separation error occurs in the low frequency component, and the method does not use the DNA. But you can see how well it can be restored by the proposed method. So using this spectrogram, for example, the upper left is the correct spectrogram, and the upper right is the input signal with the sound coming into microphones. The lower left is a separation method that does not use DNA using the pseudo-correct signal. And the lower right is a proposed method. So as you can see, this orange part, so as you can see, there is no sound element, and therefore the element is coming as a noise. Therefore, we would like to reduce that to zero. However, using the KLD loss function, we are able to effectively eliminate the noise. 
As you can see, separation error occurs in the low frequency component and therefore, so as you can see here on the left hand side and using the, mm, use, not using the DNN, there is a loss. However, on the right hand side, they are able to create a better low frequency component. So therefore, even without the correct data, the DNN can learn and therefore these kind of errors for the separation can be corrected. So that concludes my presentation. And so NII and Chris, for my final research, I would like to express my gratitude to all the helps and also Komatsu-san and also Nakagome-san and Masuyama-san. So thank you so much for your support. Thank you. And in conclusion, well, because I would like to summarize, so speech source separation is very useful technology for a voice application that I use in intense acoustic environments. So until now, so I believe the key is how to integrate DNN and sound source separation. And of course, the speech source separation as well as a bigger vision, well, because not only using DNN to learn, but we need to create a model built by humans taking physical characteristics into account. And if we are able to create that kind of model, then we hope that the human model and DNA integrate well in order to have a better speech source separation. And I would like to focus on that area. So therefore, if you are interested in speech source separation, so permit me to say, or because I believe it is difficult to build a method using DNN, but for example, based on the statistics, ILMA and IBA-based model is a Python library called Pyro Acoustic. So it is very easy to try, and therefore I'd like to invite you to try those ILMA and IBA. And for example, STFT, those are the frequency breakdown part. And after that, these kind of signals can be concatenated and using the ILMA and also the IBA. So you're able to have the result of the speech source separation. And by using ISTFF, you're able to get the speech source separation result. And those are the references that I've been used. So thank you very much for listening.